Nevada Bighorn Sheep on the Edge? This introductory video and corresponding lesson are brought to you thanks to the generosity of these fine folks. Are Nevada Bighorn Sheep on the Edge? At the end of this video, you will use real data to answer this question. For now, let's get started with some background information. Bighorn sheep have been living in Nevada for a long time, almost 39,000 years. How do we know that? Because paleontologists have discovered bones of ancient bighorns in many caves throughout the state of Nevada, and they've been able to radiocarbon date the bones, which tells us how old the bones are. In one of the caves in Nevada, the Mineral Hill Cave, the ancient bighorn sheep bones found there are almost 39,000 years old. Bighorn sheep were the most numerous ungulates in Nevada before European settlement in the early 1800s. So before white settlers moved into Nevada, it's estimated that there were at least 30,000 bighorn sheep in year 1860. And bighorns were widespread. In the state of Nevada, you could find bighorns almost everywhere. This is what the bighorn range map looked like in year 1860. But soon after, wild sheep began to disappear. This is a range map for bighorns in year 1960. Remember, there were at least 30,000 bighorns in Nevada in year 1860, but by 1960, there were only about 3,000 bighorns left. Why? Let's find out. Several factors contributed to the drastic decline of bighorns. These factors included excessive unregulated hunting, competition with domestic livestock, diseases from domestic livestock, loss of watering areas, and loss of habitat due to human causes. And because of all this, the number of bighorns began to decline. But there's good news too. So remember in year 1860, bighorns occupied almost the entire state of Nevada, but by 1960, the bighorn range looked like this? Well, that's the bad news. Here's the good news. By 2018, the bighorn range increased by a lot. How did this happen? Let's take a look. After the dramatic decline of wild bighorns in the early 1900s, Nevada Department of Wildlife and hunting organizations worked together to find ways to restore bighorns. They began aggressive programs to stop poaching and ensure that bighorn sheep hunting is strictly regulated. They began a translocation program, a research program, and a habitat program to help provide water to bighorns. Let's talk about this one first. What is a translocation program? It's when you trap bighorns in one location and move them to another location. This program has helped to restore wild bighorns back to their historic ranges where they had once been extirpated. Nevada biologists and sportsmen and sportswomen together have released over 3,380 bighorns throughout Nevada. Okay, now let's talk about the research program. Nevada biologists conduct aerial surveys with helicopters or they walk on foot to estimate how many bighorns there are in each herd. Nevada biologists have conducted thousands of hours of aerial surveys and they continue to conduct aerial surveys today. Nevada biologists also capture bighorns and collect data on bighorns so they can learn more about them. They weigh them and take measurements. They pull blood to evaluate bighorn health and learn more about disease and disease transmission. And then they release bighorns back into the wild. For some bighorns, biologists also attach GPS collars so they can track their movements and learn about habitat use. Let's see what else happens in the field when bighorns are captured for research. We are 
trying to get a snapshot across of the majority of our herds of what the overall health is. There are some significant disease issues across the West in bighorn sheep, and the only way that we can really tell if we have um, some of these bacteria present in these herds is to actually get our hands on them. We want to get an idea of the animal itself. So all the animals were getting aged, obviously sexed, um, and we're aging them by looking at the rings on their horn, their horn growth. Then we're also doing basically a physical exam. We're checking their body condition to see if they're nice and healthy. We're checking their legs. We're checking um, you know, their eyes and ears, make sure they don't have any external parasites. Then we're also taking um, blood samples to look for a variety of respiratory diseases. This type of effort allows us to do that and also allows us to put collars on the animals and track their movements and see where they're going so we can know if they're you know moving between two different herds um, along a mountain range or where they're going and we won't we wouldn't know that unless the animals are marked. And then we put them back in the bag and then they're taken back up on the mountain and released where they were caught. Being able to get out and, and um, you know see healthy animals that are doing really well, that are fat and happy and thriving on the landscape and be part of that effort is really rewarding. Now let's talk about the Habitat program to provide water. Water is a big issue in the state of Nevada because much of the habitat is extremely dry. Over 80% of bighorn herds in Nevada are water limited, which means there's not enough natural water sources in some habitats to support some bighorn herds throughout the entire year. It's important to know that bighorn sheep have evolved adaptations to conserve water during digestion of food and basic functions of the body. They can go for days without drinking water when the temperatures are below 100 degrees. So the bighorn animal is well adapted to limited water availability. When we talk about bighorns being water limited, what we mean is the habitats that bighorns live in can have limited water. So wildlife agencies, sportsmen and women, conservation organizations and volunteers have created water developments, which are sometimes called guzzlers. Guzzlers are made out of metal or fiberglass or other materials, and they're built in areas where there's just not enough water to support wildlife. Over 1,000 guzzlers have been built throughout the state of Nevada. About 250 of those guzzlers have been created specifically for bighorns. How are they built? Let's find out. Well, I'm here doing something really cool in Nevada right now. Nevada Division of Wildlife has all these guzzlers in these really arid places and we're out here kind of scoping it out and tomorrow morning a whole group of volunteers is going to come and repair two of the really critical guzzlers to this part of the state. Uh, I think they said there's 1,725 guzzlers that the state of Nevada has put in, uh, not just here, but throughout the state for the purposes of water. On this guzzler, we have uh, two aprons. The first one's a natural apron, we call it a slick rock. So when we get big uh, thunder showers and rain events, water will naturally collect in the canyon up above us and then trickle down through this kind of natural rock, bedrock apron. We collect it here, gets filtered out for sediment and then um, piped down to the storage tanks. This pipe is coming down from a metal apron, which helps augment water collection off of the uh, slick rock apron. And so as we get pre-sip, it'll hit the metal apron and it gets piped down here, meets up with the plumbing coming out of the slick rock, and then both pipes head around the base of the hill there towards the storage tanks and the drinker. All right, this is the metal apron uh, for this guzzler. And uh, once we get a big rain event, uh, water will collect on the apron and uh, run down. It'll hit the gutter right here, collect in the gutter, and then it'll come out through that corner in the pipe and off down around to the storage tanks and the rest of the guzzler. And there you have it, folks. You collect the water off the landscape, you store it in big tanks, and then you distribute it through these little drinkers. And through the work of a lot of people, their volunteerism, their advocacy, and their money, wildlife has a better place on the landscape. Thanks for watching. 
So all of this conservation work, the translocation program, the research program, and the habitat program to provide water has happened because of passionate, visionary Nevada biologists who have worked together with dedicated, energetic sportsmen and women and land management specialists. The following agencies and organizations have been instrumental in the recovery of Nevada's bighorn sheep. And the work to conserve wild bighorns has been a huge success. Remember back in 1960 when there were only about 3,000 bighorn sheep left? Well, thanks to all the conservation work, the number of bighorn sheep began to increase. And now there are over 12,000 bighorns in Nevada today, which means Nevada has more bighorn sheep than any other state in the lower 48. But that's not the whole story. Although the number of bighorns in Nevada has increased since the 1960s, some bighorn herds today are at risk. Why? What factors are affecting the conservation of bighorn sheep? To answer this question, you're going to use real data and a case study activity about wild bighorns. First, let's learn a bit more about bighorn sheep. There are three subspecies of bighorn sheep in Nevada. There's the California bighorn sheep, the desert bighorn sheep, and the Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep. California bighorns live in the north northwestern portions of Nevada, desert bighorns live in the southern region of Nevada, and Rocky Mountain bighorns live mostly in the northeastern region of Nevada. The desert bighorn sheep is the state animal of Nevada. Bighorn sheep are named this because, well, you know. A male sheep is called a ram and their horns can weigh up to 30 pounds. In the wild, the lifespan of a ram is between 12 and 14 years. A female sheep is called a ewe. Whoa, not that kind of ewe. Let me fix that. Okay, from the top. A female sheep is called a ewe. They have horns too, but their horns are short with only a slight curve. In the wild, the lifespan of a ewe is between 14 and 18 years. Bighorn sheep are well equipped for climbing steep terrain. Their outer hooves are modified toenails with a soft inner pad that provides grip. Mature rams spend most of their time in bachelor groups. The only time that rams and ewes get together is during the rut or mating season. During the rut season in July through September, dominance among rams is established in contests in which two rams may clash horns. The winner gets to mate with females. And then we have lambs. Ewes typically give birth to one lamb in spring. This is a low rate of reproduction, which makes bighorns susceptible to population declines and die-offs. Newborn lambs weigh between 6 and 10 pounds. They can walk within hours after birth. At about one week old, lambs and moms join others in the herd, and mothers nurse lambs for about four months. The primary predator of Nevada bighorns is the mountain lion. Coyotes and bobcats also prey on bighorns, and so do golden eagles. But really, in a way, the worst predator of all is disease. You're going to learn more about this later. Okay, let's switch gears a bit and talk about habitat. Habitat for Nevada bighorns varies widely, but generally, bighorn habitat includes mountains. In Nevada, there are 314 mountain ranges. That's more than any other state in the lower 48. Bighorn habitat is rough, rocky, and steep, broken up by canyons and washes, and this type of terrain affords bighorns the advantage when coping with predation. Okay, we know a little bit about bighorn habitat, but what is habitat? Habitat is the place where an animal lives. It provides all the resources an animal needs to survive and reproduce. Okay, well, what resources do wild bighorn sheep need? They need food, escape terrain, and water. 
Let's look at food resources first. The primary foods that bighorns eat include, in order of importance, forbs, grasses, and shrubs. Shrubs can be especially important to bighorns in the fall and winter after forbs and grasses have dried out. The bighorn diet varies among habitats and among seasons, and some bighorn herds disperse up and down elevation between summer and winter, looking for food, water, or both. Bighorns are ruminants with a four-part stomach. This allows them to eat large amounts of food rapidly before retreating to cliffs or ledges where they rechew and digest foods in areas that are safe from predators. Now let's look at escape terrain. Bighorns like to use steep, rough, rocky terrain. Rocks and ridges provide bighorns protection from predators. When they're in groups, bighorns protect themselves from predators by having some bighorns face different directions. That way the herd can keep watch on their surroundings. Okay, now let's take a closer look at water. Just like all other animals, bighorns need water. That's why healthy riparian areas are so important. And remember, water is a limiting resource for about 80% of all bighorn herds living in Nevada. In extremely dry areas where water is scarce, water developments have been built to provide critical watering holes for bighorns. Okay, now it's time for you to participate in a case study activity. Wait a minute, something's not right. Okay, that looks better. Let's try that again. Now it's time for you to participate in a case study activity. For the case study activity, we're going to focus on the six herds in red. So those six herds include the Snowstorm Mountains Herd, the Sheep Creek Range Herd, the Gabs Gillis Valley Range Herd, the Bear Mountain Herd, the Spring Mountains Herd, and the Muddy and Black Mountains Herd. Remember that Nevada biologists do research on bighorns and they collect data on bighorns in each herd. They use helicopters to do aerial surveys or biologists go on foot to estimate how many bighorns are in each herd each year. Nevada biologists also document mortality causes and other factors that affect bighorn conservation. So, you're going to use data like these to answer questions like, what factors affect bighorn conservation in Nevada? And are bighorns in Nevada on the edge? Are you ready? Let's get started. Step one, your teacher will divide the class into six teams. Step two, each team will be assigned one of the six case studies on wild bighorns, including real data. Step three, each team will be given student pages to work through. Step four, each team will work together to create a presentation and then present their findings to the class. And step five, all teams will work together as a class to create a list of factors affecting the conservation of Nevada bighorns and answer the question, are Nevada bighorns on the edge? After teams have finished presenting results to classmates, and after you've worked together as a class to create the combined list of factors affecting bighorn sheep conservation, then watch the results and discussion show. This concludes the introductory video for Nevada Bighorn Sheep on the Edge. To download your free student pages, data sets, teacher guide, and results show that accompany this video, please visit Bear Trust International's website at www.beartrust.org. Thank you.